Hi folks, uh, every so often I get uh, a desire to have a guy abstract painting. I've done quite a few in the past, I've sold a few. Uh, but I, I, I'm stuck in the uh, representational mode, uh, mostly. Trees and skies, which I love doing. But uh, I've got this acrylic here, and no, there we are. Got some cadmium red, ultramarine black, because I'm going to have a go at the animal abstract, and a cadmium, cadmium yellow hue. hue. Uh, I, but I, there's there are two schools of thoughts here. One that you should have something in mind before you paint, the other is that you just go, go for it. I'm in the second category. Uh, and uh, we'll see how we go. Acrylic is ideally suited to, to uh, this sort of work because it dries quickly. And I've, got, I've got a couple of brushes here that, that I going to use. They're just these two three quarter flats, lovely brushes. They're uh, Graduate Dale Rowney, three quarter flats. So, uh, so all we've got to do really is just have a go. I've I've primed this paper with uh, watercolor paper with um, some PVA glue, uh, some acrylic gesso, and a, a, a blob of burnt sienna, burnt umber, just to give it a background. Uh, so let's have a go. So I've got, I've got some vet, vet gel. Just out there, look. It's uh, a, a, a veterinarian, veterinary uh, lubrication. So let's let's go in and bang a bit of bit of black to start with. And now we know we can change any time we like with this. I, I, I'm fundamentally thinking of. Uh, you see, I'm thinking of something of uh, the black and red. Now I've used that all up already, that blob, I'm going to have to put some more out. All right, put that in the drink. Pour out some more black. I've got loads of black, that's why I'm using it. And I'll just pour some, put a big blob on the palette. Most of my cheap, well, so cheap, acrylics are from Wilk, Wilkinson's. They did do a good range of, uh, a, a reasonable range of, of acrylic, but they stopped. Now they've, they're starting to introduce them again, but it's a very limited range. Get your cadmium red and black and burnt umber. But yellow oakum is about it. What I'd really like is a, a light red in uh, acrylic. I, I don't know if I've got one. A friend gave me loads of acrylics a few weeks ago, so let's see if I get a different uh, one. I've got a, oh no, I've got more cadmium red. Loads of cadmium red. Right, okay, well, we'll use what we've got. Uh, so let's get a nice big, big blob of, of red on here. Uh, I'm going to work with the with the with the three primaries. This is just all subconscious stuff. I'm not thinking of any. Planning. It's really just having fun with paint, just cutting yourself. It's your paint, you do what you like with it. And maybe if you get inspired to do an abstract because you've seen what well, I've, I've done, okay. A lot of you won't like it and I'll get thumbs down, but it's a free video, so it's rather defeats the object. Isn't it? Yeah. Got 
to get some more red out. I might even put some green. I've got a friend, he's got, a, got an art degree some years ago, fine art, in the Open University. And she, so this person has a God given right now to tell everybody else how to do their painting. It was it who told me that uh, you should have in mind what you're going to paint. Well, I never have. I, I take pride in that. That I just pour out the paint and do the do the landscapes. And many of those landscapes are are um, semi-abstract. But I'm of a view, so it's my paint. I do what I like with it. And if you don't like it, well, tough. I'm not really revolutionary, but uh, that's coming out. <laughs> revolutionary red. Get some of that. Oh, I'm going to get loads more. Bit. I might. I might put some green in. I'm not in a particularly bad mood or anything. All this black dog. None of that. Put that in the, in the juice. Let's get some. Now, twice I've I've opened this lid and I've got paint. This paint all over my feet and all over my hands, everywhere. So pour it out. Get going with it. Uh, right, clean the brush. Start again. Have a swig of tea. This one is for my friend Sharon. Because she she doesn't have in mind what she's going to paint. She just has an, has this uh, sixth sense that di that dictates what she paints, and it's fantastic. Uh, so we'll uh, dedicate it to her because I know she'll like it because she likes whatever I do. Uh, well, what about what about a bit of bit of, bit of green or a bit of yeah. Bit of dark green. That's nice. So it's not not sheer black. This is my red, period, red and black period. Uh, probably was okay before I knocked about there. Uh, A blob. One of my favourite artists is uh, Sir Howard Hodgkin, the late Sir Howard. I love his work. It's, he says it's not abstract, but it is really. It's his resp a response to an emotional experience. Wow. Lovely. Lovely work. He he, he was fam more famous for painting painting over the frame, and he painted on wood block blocks of wood or wooden wherever he could find them, tabletops, all sorts of things, and marvelous. But have a look. There must be galleries on on YouTube or Google. Now. Yeah. Green is complementary to red, so let's put in a bit of, bit of that, bit of, bit of light green. That's just the black mixed with the, with a bit of yellow, and you get this wonderful range of greens. So you like paints grey, but we want subtle. Let's go a bit more in here. Yeah, it's looking, looking all right. And you can see an abstract doesn't take very long to do. <laughs> or in Howard Hodgkin's case, it takes two years. But then he did a bit, put the put the painting back, pulled it out later some other time. And he just worked over a painting in bits for a long time. But he did some wonderful uh, theatre backdrops. Oh, wonderful. Yellow. 
this show is getting a bit uh, a bit gooey. It's very old. I didn't buy it. This is from my friend, my friend Meg. I haven't got a frame. I've got a mount that this will I can show you. Show it. But let's get some more of that black. I like black. No white. So you can, you can see the the red has covered the uh, the burnt umber. Oh, that was the original colour. Let's just put it tight. This is probably isn't watertight. But once once your acrylic dries on, oh, there we go. There we go. nice and flat. So I get the black back. Call it black drop. That's a good good name for it. All right, let's get into that middle. Black. Because I started off black, that was my guide. Oh, we're going to do something to have a lot of, lot of black in. But you'll be surprised who, who will like this. It will get rubbish and I'll lose subscribers, no doubt. And I think I've gone off my rocker, but. Uh, I was thinking of uh, Monty Python of old, you know, years ago. I used to watch him when I was young. And now for something completely different. And that's what this is. Something completely different. It's never been done before. Certainly not by me. One the principal of an art college said, a London college I believe, uh, if you can't do it, go abstract or go modern. But I think he might have changed his mind because abstract art is very popular. It took a while to come of age in the 60s, 50s, 60s with uh, the wonderful Jackson Pollock. Well, I love Jackson Pollock. See some of his work in the Tate Modern. Very lucky. It's a wonderful, wonderful gallery. Absolutely fantastic. Can't like everything else in it. Not even sure of that green now. Maybe I'll paint that now. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever looks good. That's the guide. If it looks okay, then you can say it is. It's a nice impasto. Mm -hmm. Change the brush. Mm -hmm. Just refine that bit. Refine. <laughs> That's a joke, isn't it? Just redden that up a bit. Brighten it up. It could be anything, can't it? It's, uh, but I, I told the story probably many times that I, my local art group, I did, did a demonstration uh, in the t tonalism on uh, Thursday evening. Great fun. Uh, we had an exhibition in what was then called the Fairfield Halls, the concert. Venue, 
at the uh, middle of Croydon, been refurbished now. Well, we had a reset the exhibit there every year. The art group is all the usual, the stuff that you see as an amateur exhibition. But one, that day, I before, I was going to be on the on the door collecting money, not to call the, at the desk taking any money that people wanted to spend on a painting. It was before the, or after they went into the theatre, into the Ashcroft Theatre. My wife and I had our first real date at the Ashcroft. I won't tell you how long ago. Uh, and uh, I, that afternoon, I'd done an abstract, my first, my very first abstract. And it was about this size, but upright, and uh, I had a black background, I can't remember, I didn't photograph it. And I drizzled a gold, I did it in acrylic, and I, I drizzled a bit of gold enamel on it and silver enamel. And uh, I took it along, and I just put it up against one of the stanchions, the displays, uh, and thought I put a price of £150 on it. Now we're just talking about 25 years ago, probably longer than that. And uh, I, I went off to talk to somebody, and my pal who I was, who was sharing, was sharing the duty, came up to me and said, Hey Dave, that painting, I've just sold it, I've just got a cheque for it. I couldn't believe him, I didn't know what one he was talking about. I said, well, one of the landscapes. He said, no, the abstract. And there she was, walking, walking around with it under her arm. Oh, there you go, you see, you just don't know who's going to like something. You don't know what one person thinks is a load of rubbish. Someone else thinks it might be the best thing they've ever seen. And as far as I know, this lady is still uh, wondering what the painting was all about. But it was about nothing, it was just about enjoying painting. Just having fun with the paint. Let's go a bit more yellow in here. And just drag, drag, drag over the, the dry paint. I've got to think of a title, Coming of Age, how about that? Meaningless. But I'm quite, I'm quite enjoying this. The, on the screen, that that red is really sparkling. Oh, at this stage, you can dry up the hair dryer. Couldn't do that with oil. Uh, what I used to do, the ones that I did sell, I sold in London. In the gallery in Hayes Galleria, it's gone now. It's all, all restaurants and stuff, chains. Um, I, 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 I painted about probably twice the size of that or, or bigger, and I had to do my own framing for it, for them. But I had more luck with the with the abstraction I did with the landscapes, and uh, I would. I would use texture paste. I haven't got any now. It's very expensive. Uh, you can use plaster of Paris and Prime with PVA glue over it, just to give a surface underneath. And I paint over it, and then I background and find some sort of motif. And and then when it was a bit dry, I would put. Uh, I would uh, go over with some oil paint with a brush, and when it was red, I just I just wipe it back with a cloth. Oh, I got some lovely effects from it. So I, I sold three or four in that particular gallery in, in, during the year. Really good. So you just don't know. You really don't know. Sort of geometric. Uh, I need a bit of a bit of something here. Okay, well, I might do another one of these. Um, I enjoy doing this. Um, I'll put it in a, in a mount. Now, to do that, I'm going to have to just give it a bit of a dry because I want to put it in a mount or put a mount around it just to see what it's like. So, just take your headphones off. Go. Oh, another trick I learnt, 
I had instead of a hair dryer, I had I had a uh, an electric uh, heat gun. Uh, but uh, it's much hotter than that hair dryer, and it lasted for quite a time. What I do when I'd got my paint on on the board or whatever I was painting on, when the paint was dry, I would use the gun on it and it would frazzle the, the paint. You've got this wonderful texture. Now, if I ever use it, uh, see that technique again, <laughs> just remind me of it. Right, I'll uh, put a bit of tape on the top to stop it falling down. I'm getting on my filthy apron. But the one I did on Thursday for Carl Schultz and the Wellington Art Group, it was a, it was a, well, it was um, a two-tone colour uh, tone study, and I, I just whacked the paint on. You've seen me do them before if you go back in my history on YouTube, um, and. Uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll do get the basics in, which was pretty, which uh, they enjoyed. Got some tea time, so I had a cup of tea. I've got out more the, the all the oil paint, so I was going to, going to change the two tone colour into a more colourful landscape. And I'd forgotten my white, my titanium white. This is oil, oil paint. So what to do? But luckily, I had a I had a tube of uh, chrome chrome yellow, which apparently was. Uh, Turner's favourite yellow, and I managed to, to by by lifting out, I could I could put the paint the colour on in the sky, and then take it off with a bit of cloth, and it would go but we'll go back to the we wouldn't go back to the white underpainting, but it uh, was okay. And then I used a lot of stipple over it. I completely changed the changed the scene into oh into a more traditional. The, uh, oil painting and they loved it but uh, it was a bit scary because they painted quite a lot to, for me to demonstrate and there I was struggling but in the end it, it uh, came out okay so right let's get this mount and we'll put that on there put that on oh there we have some extracts there is a problem with doing this is that my next one would probably be based uh, on, on, on something like this but it, it would be an accident really let's just I have to uh, take you up a bit because I can't zoom out any more than that so there we are an, an abstract now, I know most people are, are, are going to be aghast at this, but uh, others will enjoy it. And, and what, it, what it hopefully will do to some of you is, especially if you're a, 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 a beginner painting, an intermediate, give you an idea of, of how to use paint in a different way. Because there will come a point in your painting life where you will get fed up with what you're doing because you'll just be recycling the same old stuff. That is what, is what I do. That's what all of us are doing, well, most of us are doing. Apart from the likes of the great uh, Michael Smith, who's, who paints, can paint photographically, brilliant, on YouTube. I knew him. Uh, we used to exhibit in the same gallery, but he was far more successful than I would ever be. And he was only 19 at the time. Uh, well, there we are. Now that's going to dry a bit dull because that the the red is is just in a stage of drying. But uh, but I hope you like that one, folks. And if you don't, give me some constructive criticism, not just a thumbs down because you're not paying to see the video. It's all free. It's an entertainment. Okay. Well, I'm going through another one now. See you soon. Bye bye.